This, I think, is the most surprising of all the slides. Uh, we saw that most people think that if you make something heavier, it's going to fall faster. And there is some logic there. Your brain is not stupid. That is a good thought because if you have more mass, you're going to have a greater attraction towards the earth. Your gravity is higher. Okay, the, the pull or your weight is higher. The pull of gravity on that mass is more the more massive you are. Okay, so a heavier object gets pulled stronger. But there is the other law of Newton that has to be considered, and that's inertia. And inertia simply said, every time you have a mass, you will resist change in motion. If it's stopped, it wants to stay stopped. And it's hard to get it to go. If it is going, it's hard to get it to stop. Okay, so if you have, in the case, two packages falling, one with a mass and one with a double mass, okay, and that's twice the weight, that means you're gonna have twice the gravity. So the second one should fall faster if that's the only consideration. But the second one has twice the mass, and so it's twice as sluggy, if you wanna think of it that way, to change. It doesn't want to start speeding up. It wants to stay the same speed it is. So it's harder to move, it's harder to accelerate a double-sized object for that reason. And you, can you see, they both cancel out. So when two packages are dropped, it does not matter what, they, what their mass is, they will fall at the same rate because they're pulled at, they're, they're pulled at different, different amounts, but they also have different inertias. Now, to getting your head around that, that's pretty cool. Um, because I would have fallen into the same problem of thinking that a heavier object would fall faster. Uh, so did Aristotle, one of the smartest men that ever lived. Never thought it all the way through and figured that it would fall faster. Yeah, it took Galileo 1,500 years later to actually do some experiments to see, no, that's wrong. And it was inertia of Galileo that became Newton's first law. So, even though it was Galileo that first thought of the idea of inertia, it was Newton who realized what that meant. He realized the significance that two objects, no matter their mass, will fall at the same acceleration because their masses compared to the Earth is so puny, it doesn't matter if you have one pound being dropped or two pounds or a hundred pounds, when the, the mass of the Earth is zillions and zillions of times bigger than that, you end up with a common acceleration. So we're gonna see that G, or gravity, is a specific case of A. A is your acceleration. And since, we're, since we live on this Earth and we're not planning on going anywhere else, we think of a specific case, G, and we're gonna see that G is 9.81 meters per second every second. So it, if you, something is falling, every second it's getting 9.8 meters per second faster. Okay, so nine meters, okay, meters about three feet-ish. Okay, so that means 27 feet in a second. That's what a meter, that is what um, 10 meters per second would be. It's about, about 30, uh, 30 feet it's actually 32, 32 feet in a second. Well, that's the speed, 32 feet a second faster every second. So if something falls out of an airplane, it's gonna go in one second, it's gonna go 32 feet uh, per second, and then twice that in two seconds, three times that in three seconds. And so G is a common idea of gravity, and it was Newton who had this idea that it doesn't matter what you weigh, your gravity is going to be the same. Now, if you remember what I told you about friction, when two objects grind against each other, there is microscopic um, um, stoppage, if you want to think of it, of motion. And friction will eventually slow anything down. Okay? You're not going to go forever unless it's, you're in a frictionless environment, maybe like space, perhaps. Okay? But if you're falling in the air, you do have air molecules, which is matter. Now, they're very light because it's in the gas form and there's very, there's very little volume and, and very little mass. And so there's not a ton. You can walk through the air, but you start, you start having lots of air hit you. And it's almost like, in, it's almost like a wall. 
Okay, you've all stuck your hand out of the car window and you can feel the opposition of those air molecules against your hand just going 50 miles an hour. Well, as you are going faster and faster and faster falling, okay, you've got two forces on you. You have the force of gravity pulling you towards the earth and you have a backwards force caused by the bumping of the air molecules in on this package as it's falling. Okay, so you have two objects uh, or two forces one going up, one going down. You're gonna see that the, the, the air friction going up is never gonna be 100%. So you never, you don't have the coyote that just kind of falls halfway and stops. Uh, it doesn't work that way. But, the, but um, it does oppose, so air friction means you don't fall as fast as you would have fallen if you were in a vacuum. So this brings us to another thing that Newton came up with, and that is the idea that unless you're in a vacuum, you cannot totally fall at 9.81 because you do have some opposition from those air molecules. They, there is some slowing down. So even if you drop a basketball to the ground, you are going to have a little bit of slowdown as that ball falls due to the air that's in the room. And the bigger the surface, the more that it would resist air. air. That's why that if you drop something round like a marble and something equally as massive, same amount of, of mass, but that would be say flat like a large piece of cardboard or a piece of cardboard with the same weight as the marble, the cardboard is not gonna fall as fast because it's catching the air more. So the frontal surface area, the one that's hitting the air and its speed, okay, will determine how much of free fall it is. Free fall really is thought of as an object falling in a vacuum uh, in a gravity field. Now, I've had friends that have jumped out of airplanes. You'd have to push me out of an airplane if you wanted to get me out of one. Um, and that would cause, I would have fight you all the way through. But in any case, if you do, say, jump out of an airplane, and you do have, uh, the faster you fall, the more that your friction works, okay? The more that the air is bumping into you, and the more the air is actually slowing you down there is gonna be a place to where you're not gonna get faster, okay? So imagine falling out of, the, out of the airplane and you're going zero initially. After one second, you're going 10 roughly with a little bit of air friction subtracting and then 20 meters per second and then 30 meters per second and then 40 meters per second. You're getting faster and faster and faster. Well, the faster you go, the more friction that you're experiencing from the air and eventually, you're going to get to the point where the force of gravity is equaling the air resistance. Okay, the air resistance goes so much that it's equaling the force of gravity. Now that doesn't mean you stop because you're still falling at a speed. You may be going 50 meters per second through the air, but you don't get faster. Okay, so uh, a person truly, if, if they didn't have, this is called terminal velocity of a, of a, of a jumper or a, a parachutist, terminal velocity means you fall and then after a while, you're going at a constant speed. You don't keep getting faster after a certain amount of fall, okay? You fall for a few hundred yards, um, half a mile or whatever, and then, then eventually your speed equalizes and that's called terminal velocity. And it's because gravity is being equally opposed by the force of friction. Essentially, gravity is being canceled out. And this is the term for it. Terminal speed is how fast that, you, um, how fast that you're going to go because you're not getting faster. Terminal velocity is the same. You're, I assume that you're falling down. Okay, so terminal velocity means as, you, as you're falling and air is, is hitting you, eventually the gravity pull, which is making you faster, is opposed by the friction of the air and you stop getting faster. It's called terminal velocity. Okay, I've tried to explain this already. Sky diaper jumps, the weight's the only force acting on it, and then eventually air resistance starts picking up, and now it's slowing you down. The faster that you fall, and the, the more you're going through the air, the more air resistance, and eventually gravity is opposed by this air resistance, and you stop getting faster. You've reached your terminal velocity. On the moon, in Apollo 11, I think it was Apollo 11, Neil Armstrong dropped a feather and a hammer. And since there's no atmosphere on the moon, there is no air on the moon, 
it is a vacuum. And since it's a vacuum, the feather wasn't opposed by the, by the air molecules any more than the, than the hammer was. And on television in front of everybody, he dropped them and they hit the ground at the same time. Just like Galileo uh, had deduced when he first did the cannonball experiments off of Pisa Tower, um, after reading one of Aristotle's books that says that heavy things fall faster, okay? So this is a lab thing. Um, I used to have one of these. It's a coin and a feather, and you take a pump, and you pump all the air out of the, the glass tube, and when, when you turn it over, they'll slam onto the bottom a plate just at equal times. 